Let's start with the demonstration and then I'm gonna to go to doing an NG diagram. Okay, so you've seen the whoosh bottle, but maybe you haven't seen it live, okay? So um, here is, I always, they call us the whoosh bottle, but it's a five gallon container. Okay, now I'm gonna add an, uh, an alcohol, an alcohol that combusts, but I wanna light the vapors, not the liquid. So what I wanna do is, is pour some of the liquid in here. Okay, and I want to just kind of turn this around. Turn this place around right now. A little Van Halen for you. I think they turned 40 or 50 this week. I don't know, last week. I think he died. Yeah, the lead guitarist died. That's sad. Wasn't that recent? Yeah, yeah. that was like a month or two ago. Eddie Van Halen died, yeah. He died from a... Okay, so would you say that the evaporation of the ethanol that I used is spontaneous. Yeah. No. 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 It required constantly no. moving it. Okay, and, it, and maybe it needed energy from the room because, by the way, this is cold. But wait a minute. Did it happen? Yes. Yeah. 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 So in your eyes right now, even though it needed energy, it still can be spontaneous. There's two parts. To be spontaneous, okay, means what? Constant energy. That means that the total entropy, dispersion of energy, has to increase in the universe. But in the universe includes two things, the system and the surrounding. Did this happen or not? Yes. Yes, yes it evaporated. You can clearly see that there's no liquid left. Okay? So clearly it happened. So it is spontaneous. Now, why? Well, that means that the entire universe's entropy had to increase, correct? Mm -hmm. But what is included? There's the entropy in the system, and there's the entropy of the what? Surroundings. So if I look at this, look at this box, and in my box, I have the system. That's this. So inside the system, what do I have? I have ethanol liquid becoming ethanol gas. So would you say the entropy is increasing by liquids be going from liquids going to a gas? Yes. 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 Absolutely. So inside the box, the delta S of the system, the entropy is positive. It's increasing. We're dispersing the energy. Okay. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but does this feel cold or hot? Is it cool? Yeah, it's cool. And I, and I should have done it to you before and after. This has got this got a little cold because in order for a liquid to become a gas, no matter what energy had to flow into the system from the surroundings. We're going to boil water, or in this case, it's alcohol evaporating. You need energy, okay? So energy had to come from where? The surroundings. The surroundings. That means the gas molecules lost some energy and they're not dispersing, they're slowing down. So the delta S of the what? Surroundings is negative. Hmm, but you saw it happening. So the delta S of the universe is positive. There's two parts to the entropy. It's what the particles are doing and what the energy does to the surrounding particles. So clearly this happened. So clearly what was a bigger change that offset the, offset the other? Would you say that the entropy of the system was an increase enough to overcome the loss of energy. Yes. How do I know? It happened. Okay, the entire delta S of the universe is considered to what happens to the particles and what happens. If energy comes out, energy comes out of the air, they slow down. They can't disperse enough. Okay? So that is one thing to look at, and that's what last night was about. We're going to build on that. Now, I'm going to light this now. Oh, I didn't wait too long. I need a. Um, I need to put a um, shield up. Oh, Christmas. You, you broke the last. One. I did, didn't I? I say it's cool. Yeah. Did I? Is there not? Is there not another one? Uh, just, use a, just use that Tupperware over there. Oh, there's one over here. There's one over here. It's great. Okay. Using yoga. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Isn't ethanol in with the clone? Well, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna light this. I, I may be waiting too long because I was talking. Are you gonna do another one? I'll, I'll probably will. <laughs> and you guys, you saw me fail an epic fail the other day. 
All right, so everyone can see that. Okay. Now, once in a while, the the um, the tube could could explode, but all right. No risk, no reward. Watch Mr. Grotzen stay all the way in the back of the classroom. No, I'm gonna light it in the other room. Are you kidding me? Okay. What are you doing? Yeah, wait. No. Okay. So, any case, uh, now how come now alcohol vapor react with oxygen very spontaneously? Is that why it's like a fire? So right now the reaction is spontaneous even though it's not going, right? It can, there is spontaneous means that delta S and will increase, but also means that because it increases, there is a pathway for it to occur. Okay. So this, my friends, if you can see this, it's a little spark. Every reaction, spontaneous or not, requires an input of energy. This is the activation energy. This is the E of A. So I'm going to put this in here. Okay. And see what happens. And if I waited too long, I might have pushed out all the oxygen because it's really the oxygen. But hey, I'm tall. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three. Whoa. <laughs> that was loud. That was, really that was a lot louder than it sounded in the video. Oh my God. Okay. My ears. What just happened? So, there was a good release of energy in that reaction. Actually, free energy. In fact, if I was to put this, okay, against a wall and light it, couldn't it push off? Yeah. Could yeah. we theoretically get on top and ride that? And wouldn't that be free energy, like riding a pony? Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, yes, it would I think be. we should put Connor on I've it. shot these down the walls. So there's different things you can do. Now, calling me skinny? So this was spontaneous, correct? Yeah. This process, why is it spontaneous? Why was this demo spontaneous? Yes? Because it didn't need constant energy. Didn't need constant supply. By the way, did it happen? Yeah. yeah. So there was a pathway. Okay? So let's break it down with an energy diagram. Because this, again, could be something you see tomorrow. Okay? Definitely, you're going to get extra credit. Okay? In energy. Okay? Now, here it is the free energy diagram. Change in Gibbs free energy. This is just means free energy change. Okay, now let's go over the points here now, of this reaction. Now what was the reaction? The reaction was ethanol C2H5OH uh, plus oxygen and it gives me CO2 and water. All right. Okay, that's the general reaction. It's a basically an organic piece of matter. All right, and we don't have to worry about balancing. That'd be a, a another day, another reaction for another day. But I guess we could do that. Um, two carbons, two carbons. Okay, uh, I've got six H's, so I can throw a three here. Okay, this gives me three water and three times two to four, seven oxygens all together. Okay, if you look at that, all I'm doing is saying, hey, I have two carbons over here, two carbon atoms. I have two carbon atoms here. Okay, what we say is law of conservation of mass. I have six hydrogens all together. So I put a three in front, three times two is six. So I've balanced all of my H's and all of my carbons. Now I have one here and two oxygen, three oxygens. Two times two is four. Okay, three and I, I'm adding three to that, right? So I have seven oxygens. Okay, so one way we do this with three oxygen is seven. What times two is seven? Wait, what was the question? What number times two is seven? 3.5. 3.5. Okay, so we can put 3.5 here. Now people don't like 3.5. Now, oh. yeah, and, um, so we can go, or seven over two. It's the same thing, right? Wow. So sometimes they put that in chemistry books. Some people don't like that because how can you have seven? How can you have two point five oxygens? So what they'll do is they multiply everything by two. Okay, that gives you a seven, your four, and that's your six. And that's one way to balance. But don't worry about that. That's the balanced overall reaction. Who cares? Now, what's happening? Clearly energy was going into the reaction or out of the reaction? Out. Oh, net. Net. We know that we started the reaction by a little bit of input, but net overall change. 
I gave you a dollar, that thing was releasing a lot more than, than a little bit, correct? Mm -hmm. So over here, I put energy or free energy. And I, for, for those that can't see at home, I'm sorry, I'll move that over. I can see that I was being tall. Uh, not bad. Except when you hit your stuff. It's good when you go to concerts or stuff like that when you used to have that stuff. But it stinks when you hit your head on stuff. Exactly. Sit down in front. I say I'm sitting. So right here, it's going to be plus free energy. Notice the free energy is where? At the end. At the end. My friends, these are reactants, right? Reactants. These are what? Products. Reactants become products. Okay, now, let's plot the change in free energy. If energy is overall being released, think with me, it's logical. If energy is overall being released, would it make sense my products have less or would it make sense my products would have more at the end? Less. Less, right, it's logical. If I'm releasing this energy, it didn't come out of nowhere. It came out of the organic carbon-based product. Something that can burn. Something that can explode, something that can release heat, must have free energy stored inside of it. Okay, so we start high and we go low. I'm glad no one said, how low can you go? Thank you. Now, all right, now, what are, okay, the things that go here? <laughs> I love you guys. All right, so these are the reactants. What are the reactants? Well, C2, H5, OH, and O2. Okay, who are the products? CO2, water. I know energy was a product, but it's not there anymore. It was what? It was released. Wasn't it before CO2? Yeah, if we balanced it, but I'm just gonna name I'm just naming the chemicals. Okay, good point. At some point you're gonna like this. Why do you put the iPad in the middle? I don't think so. What, what's that? Why, why don't you put the iPad like in the middle? Because more people can't see. Besides, I like the, I like, because I'm always teaching from two things. I don't know. It is good angle. I like the dynamic. Okay. He measured it. You, measure you like something? I like the list. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Victories. I'll take them however small. Okay. So free energy is released. All right. Uh, any case, um, I just want, I just want one day for you to say, you know what? I like that website you have every day. It's never going to happen, but I'm hoping. Okay. Now. So we start high and go low. It's the first thing you do with these diagrams because it's the first thing I always look for. What is the difference of where I start and what is the difference of where I what? Finish. That difference right here is the change of delta G. So this is the delta G. Maybe I should just say free energy here. Then I have to confuse people. So this is the change of delta G. Now, it's very important. If you have a spontaneous reaction, if you're spontaneous, which means, hey, it's working right in front of you, okay? Or self-sustaining, okay? Means what? The delta S of the universe, the entropy, is increasing or positive. That means you have a pathway. It means energy is just being dispersed all over. But it also means that delta G is negative. That's huge. Delta G is negative. Why? Because it's going down. Why is it going down? Because I'm releasing the free energy. And the reason why they call it free energy is you can use that to do work. That, this, Bless you. this could be moving. We can sit on it and it could be a rocket ship, okay? Hopefully you hold on tight and it can move you around, okay? I mean, I don't know how far, but theoretically it could, just like the pony, okay? So that's important and it's logical. Okay, so now we need a reaction pathway. Okay, now before we do that, we have to understand that this right here, the reason why it's high is because these chemicals, this is the amount of free energy they have. So this is the free energy of the reactants, right? And what is this? The free energy of the products. And it makes sense. Something that can explode, burn, give off free energy is not going to have it anymore as it releases it. So this is an example, of course, of an exergonic reaction. All of this means exergonic. Well, I've been saying it exergonic. Whatever. I'm probably be saying it wrong. Yes. 
Could there be a reaction where it just stays the same? No. No, that's a good point, though. You can never see a graph look like this. Okay? Because what is important for Friday that we did is that every change of energy, every time there is something happening in the universe, there has to be a little bit of that energy has to be released. Now, listen, in, in, in a really way, some of this free energy that's released, some of it can be used to do work. But we can't capture a lot of it, right? We can't take all the energy that's released in this reaction and convert it into another reaction. If we could, we'd have a perpetual energy machine. You can't. In order for something to take place, there has to be a per preferred pathway, which means you have to do what with the universe? The only way for the entropy to increase so a reaction can go is some of that must, get, must escape that you can't use. So this can never be, because that means the process didn't occur. You have to have a process that has a change for it to happen. Yes? So if we were running an experiment and nothing happened, like say we forgot to add a chemical and nothing happened, right? then that would mean that there was no free there, energy the, to leave? That's correct. Okay. If nothing happens. And see, this is the greatest thing for chemists. Once chemists figured this thermodynamics out, they can actually calculate whether a reaction will go or not. Before this, we just mix stuff together and just sit there, hmm. Now we can predict and measure the spontaneity of process. Why would I build a chemical plant to make whatever I want to make if the reactions I chose to make it don't really work, are not spontaneous? Now I can force them to work, but man, maybe I need so much energy it's not going to be economical. Okay, these are important calculations, and they really are really more important in biology. Yes? So what you did with the, the blue thing, is that what happens with like a car engine? Yeah, like I mean, it's not a car engine, but essentially we have small little explosions in pistons. So it's so gosh darn interesting, we have this what? Pistons, actually they go upside down. So you have these pistons, right? And they go like this. And we have what in them? Spark plugs. What do you think the spark plug does? Like right, we shoot with fuel injectors, some gasoline that becomes vapor, okay, we add oxygen, this thing comes up, which is like a, a, a syringe, we have an explosion, this pushes on this downward and that motion hits a rocker arm and we convert that to the axle wheel. And if you are a V6 engine, you've got six of those pistons, if you're a V8, you've got eight of them, okay surrounds you all this stuff surrounds you okay but you better start with a fuel that has a lot of free energy okay doesn't work any way other way up you can't put co2 and water in our car and expect to go anywhere okay not going to happen now so like when a car gas. backfires car backfires because essentially you've got some fuel that's getting into your um warm exhaust and the heat of the exhaust exhaust is the what spark that ignites it. So backfiring just means that you have a lot more, and a lot more, you have some fuel, your fuel ratio is not right, okay? And you got that spark by the heat of the exhaust is igniting your fuel, okay? Now, this is great. Hopefully that makes sense to you, but we need a pathway, okay? This is called a state function, but you don't even know this yet, but this is a pathway. How, do, how does the reaction proceed? Well, it doesn't go straight down. If this is exactly how it's written, Everything that could burn and give off would go directly here. Boom. There has to be, there has to be something that prevents reactions from going. There has to be a reaction barrier. And here's what it is. There's your barrier. Why is it a barrier? Because for this to work, I've got to get to this peak. So the energy that I provided to start this reaction was a tiny little energy Okay, this little spark right here. Okay, hope I spark your interest. Ow! <laughs> Wait, what happens if you touch someone with that? Okay, what's that? What happens if you touch someone with that? Try it on your way. I got my, I got my, I got shot. I burned okay. my finger on a ledger the other day. Okay, I like turtles. <laughs> All right, now. <laughs> We're all sure. Now, so because there's a little hump here, okay, this is called E of A which is your activation energy. All reactions require it. And what does it do? It helps the reaction start. Now, in order for the reaction to go, you've got to get to this energy peak. Now, this energy peak right here is called the activated complex. 
Now, what is this? Okay, and I know I explained it in the video, but maybe I wasn't clear enough. Okay, listen. In order for reactions to work, chemical reactions, in the body, out of the body, there has to be a physical collision. Okay? But that collision has to be effective. Right? They're, atoms all the time hit each other. But when are they spontaneous enough to make a new compound? When the collision is effective. Now, to be an effective collision, you have to have enough kinetic energy, enough energy to overcome something. On the outside of atoms and molecules are clouds of electrons. They're negatively charged. So when these come together, they repel. So you've got to have enough kinetic energy to overcome those repulsive forces, and then the collision is strong enough for that to occur. Is that why opposite sides of a magnet repel? Yes, in, in truth. Okay. But what we're talking about here is negatives. So you need to overcome that, that repulsive force. And that's what that energy is. Now, I gave only a little bit of spark. What did that do? Gave just a few of these atoms enough to overcome. They released what? Some heat and some energy that was enough to do what? Start others. And that's what kept this going until I ran out of fuel. But, all right, a lot of heat was released in the process. So, that's what this is. Now, what is this point right here? Well, this point right here is that point of no return. We're just about ready. This is the highest repulsive force. Once you get past it, it's going to go. And that's what the activated complex is. It's that highest peak of repulsion. Once you get past it, you go. Best analogy is I love slides. And who doesn't? I drive around and I see a park. Okay. Um, and people go running, but I come out of the car six foot nine and I drive the slide. Who doesn't? But to ride the slide, I got to get to the top. No, I don't do that. That would be very scary. You see, a, you see six foot nine come out of the car, running to the slide, you would grab your children. Let's go. Get out of here. Okay. If I was short, maybe you'd be like, whatever. We see this guy running. Yes, yeah, slide. Like, get out of here now. But to ride the slide, you got to get to the top. And that's what this is. So this is the activation energy of the forward reaction. Notice something, party people. If I go in the reverse, which would make this an, what? Endergonic. Look at my activation energy now. Much higher. Yes? Is there like a way to remember exergonic? Yes. Exer. Exiting. Heat is exiting. Exergonic. Endogonic. And so I always, I see the X. It's exiting. It's this. Wait, so what does EA stand for? EA is activation energy. Okay, yes? So the activation energy is the spark? Yes. And that is What's what gets us over the top. Paper? What's the slide thing called? That's called the activated complex. Oh, this this right here? This, no, no, this? no, the activation complex. That's what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's, it's just a maximum energy repulsive that you have to overcome. It's the highest energy peak. Why does energy go up? I'm repelling, I'm repelling, repelling more, repelling more. Oh, I overcome that. Okay, yes? Let's say you change it from the blue to like a little small water bottle. So there's less energy or less oxygen. Would the energy increase or decrease? Well, less of the oxygen, would less of the higher? reactants, less energy overall. So it wouldn't, it would still go, it, was, it would still make a sound, but would be nearly, this is five gallons. So I got five gallons of reactive space for more of a whoosh. So it wouldn't really. So it'd be less, because there's less of the fuel, less of the reactants. Just like you, you know, you know, there's a good, uh, gasoline has an ability to explode, although it normally boils through, it's a different story. But we put a little bit of, of gasoline into the cylinder, so we don't put, you know, a lot. It's just enough for it to move down and then put more in. Yes? So if you were to put more of the alcohol in there, would it make a bigger explosion? No, because I have to add just enough so it evaporates. If I add too much, and it would smother it the oxygen. exactly, there'd be so much evaporation that I'd push out the oxygen, and it wouldn't, I needed the oxygen to stay in here but still have enough. Okay, so that has to be a good balance. So if I, wait, I, was, I, was, I was scared if I waited too long, it would evaporate it out. So too much is not enough. And, and the demo that I did with the, with the, um, the other thing didn't work. Okay, uh, because of that. All right, so, so we're almost done here. So this is an example of all the little parts you have to have. Okay, hey, first step, where you start, where you finish. Hey, it's going down. Why? I'm releasing free energy. Hey, right away, spontaneous. Okay, this is the energy, free energy of my reactants and my products. And it makes sense, logical. Okay, I've got to have a pathway that gives me a reaction barrier. To get to the top of that slide, that's your activation energy. Where you're looking forward or you're looking in reverse. Notice something. If the forward is exergonic, reverse is what? Endogonic. Okay, that means this way, still possible, 
but I'm going to have to add a constant supply of energy. Because what? I'm going to go from low high. to high. That means I would have to have energy continually keeping this going, kind of like photosynthesis. Turn the light off, no more photosynthesis. You need a constant supply to make this go. This is now me carrying the pony up the hill. So what would be the opposite? Be non-spontaneous. Delta S of the universe is going down, bad thing. Delta G is what? Going up. Yeah, it's going up. You're making a concentrated source. You're right. trying to make a, and by the way, you're gonna, the reason why it is non-spontaneous, are you taking all the energy to make a concentrated source or is someone's gonna be lost? Can you take all the free energy and make a concentrated source? No, no someone's gonna be lost. So you, you know, you're losing free energy over time. And of course this is endogonic. So would that be like carrying a pony up the hill? Yes, photosynthesis, okay? Cleaning your room. Think about your room. Do you put energy in for it to get dirty? No. No, it does it by itself. You don't have to put any effort. So when your folks ask you to clean your room, what you should say is, listen, I can't fight the second law of thermodynamics. I'm going to lose every time. Okay, probably don't want to. Probably you shouldn't, okay? But the point is, is that You've got to put effort in to fight what? Dispersion of energy. You don't have to put any effort in getting it dirty. So you're never going to win that battle, okay? You're always going to have to clean up. I'm going to say clean and get it more dirty. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, 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 yeah. okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. you find stuff? Like, what? Find yeah, like papers. All right. Yeah, one little piece, and then I'm going to give you a break. And then we're going to do another demonstration and break that one down. Okay. Now, this was clearly exergonic in the forward direction. Let's look at the reaction now. Okay? Okay, now, what do we have? Keeping this balanced. By the way, this was a liquid. This was a gas. These are all gases. Let's look at the system's entropy. Remember, we have a box. Here's the universe. Here's the system. Let's look at the particles. I've got nine particles becoming ten. Explain to me why that is an increase in entropy. If I go from nine particles to ten, the degrees of freedom are greater. greater. I have more individual particles that can take the energy. When things are bigger, they just vibrate as a bigger particle. But if there's more of them and they have more degrees of freedom, you can disperse them. So that by itself is an increase in entropy. But look at here. Seven out of the nine are gases. Ten out of ten are gases. Ooh, what does that tell you? Who are more freer to disperse, gases or liquids? Gases. So when I've got liquids becoming gases, okay, and there's an increase of gases or, or increase of that phase change, that screams to you dispersion of energy. Gases fly around the room hundreds of miles an hour. Liquids got to stay in their container. Who can disperse more? So for both of those reasons, we would say that the delta S of the system is increasing. That's a positive. Cool. Now, what else? Whoa, energy was released. Right? I, you know, I, I, this is energy over here, right? So this is energy here, big would, E for energy. Would the inside be decreasing? What's that? Would the inside be decreasing? Like the well, it's losing energy for sure, but the particles are definitely increasing the entropy. Okay, so that alone is enough to overcome them. But how big is the surrounding compared to the system? Huge in the universe, right? But if I'm releasing energy, isn't that going to make the molecules around here go faster and disperse? Yeah. Yes! So for two reasons, so the delta S of the what? Of the surroundings is also positive. And they're both positive, clearly the universes. There's no competing. When we did the evaporation of the alcohol, you saw it happens, okay, so it was spontaneous. This absorbed energy. That's bad. It made the surroundings universe, or made the uh, surroundings Delta S, negative. They lost some ability to disperse by energy going into the bottle to what? Make it evaporate. But this went from liquid to gas. Because you saw it happen, you knew the delta S of the entire universe was positive, but it had to be that the gas particles, liquid becoming gas, overtook the entropy of the system was enough to overtake the entropy of the surroundings. Here, you've got both systems going. 
in the same direction, increasing the entropy. Number one is that a lot of chemical reactions are spontaneous in your body. This is a connection for this weekend too. Most reactions that work in your body work from a high energy, especially breaking down, let's say, glucose or food. They have a lot of energy for us to what? Give off the work to couple reactions, okay? And that's what this is about. But they don't happen with high enough what? Frequency. In order for reactions to work, they have to physically collide. Well, there's a lot of molecules. There's a lot of things colliding. Even in a small, small, small prokaryote, there's so many different molecules, the chance of them colliding with enough energy and with the proper orientation, that's the second part of an effective collision because big molecules sometimes only have areas where they can bond. So they might have enough kinetic energy, but they have to have proper orientation. It's the second part of effective collision. But the point I'm trying to make here is that most reactions won't occur with a fast enough rate, okay, in order for life to exist. So we need, of course, enzymes. And what an enzyme does is it lowers this cost. This is important. So this right here lowers this line. So this dashed line represents the pathway with an enzyme or a catalyst. And what enzymes do is they lower the height of the slide. So if I have a slide I want to ride, because I like slides and I scare all the people away, how many slides can I get in the five minutes before I have to pick my kids up? Okay, which is kind of weird. Okay, all right. But if it's a slide that's very short, I can get a lot more slides in for the same energy, right? Same idea. So why is this energy lower with an enzyme? This is really important. If the slides were to follow what you're doing, the same energy. Well, let's say I have the same amount of energy I want to expend. Can I get more rides in for the same energy? Because I'm climbing less. So I'm gonna have more. Let's say I have a hundred calories or a thousand calories, whatever. Because I'm climbing less to get to the top, I have more energy to make more okay, trips. So that's the way to think about it. But that's an analogy. But in terms of molecular biology, okay, how does a catalyst lower the over energy? Like, why is this energy lowered? Think about it. If I'm an independent particle, to find another particle, I've got to eventually collide with this one just by chance. So what do we do in chemistry? We increase the temperature. By increasing the temperature, I make these guys move faster, and so they do what? find each other more often. You can't do that in biology because you, you melt the cell. You'll kill the organism past 37 degrees Celsius, obviously for us, right? So we can't just increase the temperature. Us chemists will do that. We'll make them move faster, and eventually they'll find each other often enough so that the reaction goes. But we can't do that. So what we have are catalyst enzymes. And this is really important that you grab this. So if I look at this diagram here, what are proteins that are catalysts. Those are three-dimensional tertiary proteins. I'm oversimplifying this. Okay, no, this is not me, okay. <laughs> but what they do is they have an active site, all right? The active site is a three-dimensional microenvironment where it, by moving by chance, will collect, right? So that shape is specific for, let's say, uh, let's, we're making this up, but for the ethanol. Let's say the ethanol has this shape. It fits right here. And let's say the oxygen, it's not this way, but we're just going to make this up, has this shape. Or has this shape. I know they're similar, so just leave me alone. Okay, now what did I just do? By the catalyst moving around, it collects. This will arbitrarily hit this and collects it. This oxygen arbitrarily, this is, this, this is my tertiary protein, right? It's folded by the R groups that we talked about dehydration synthesis, everything we talked about, hey, hey, okay. So they have a what? They have an active site that collects the substrate. And just by moving randomly, they collect in those spots. And then they'll collide in the spots they need to. So what the enzyme does is it eliminates the random amount of energy you have to exude to get them to collide often enough. This lowers the energy needed to, for this reaction to go because this will collect one substrate here, collect another here, and put them what? In close proximity to bond. So enzymes use their three-dimensionality to bind with the substrates so that they don't have to what? Aimlessly collide randomly. It's kind of like, I always give this analogy. Think about dancers on a dance floor. Let's pretend that they're like my family who, are, who think they're good dancers. 
Everyone in my family thinks they're a good dancer. Are they tall? Well, we have two sides to my family. We have really tall and really tall the other way. So we're all over the place. But the point is, none of us are good dancers, <laughs> although we think we are, which is dangerous because there's music playing. When there's rhythm, people can get out of the way of the rhythm. But there's no, nobody has any rhythm. Well, we've had grandmothers with black eyes. I've had a grand uncle lose a tooth. Okay, um, and we love to dance. So, so when there used to be non-COVID types of weddings and everything else, we go right to the dance floor. Okay, um, I always had that uncle that fast dance was slow as one. But at any point, what are the chances of an elbow-to-elbow -elbow collision? High, still high. low. Well, higher in my family because more random. But generally speaking, it's still low. If I make them dance faster, there'll be more elbows to elbows. Let's pretend an elbow to elbow is an effective collision. So if I make them go faster. With my random dancing family, there's a higher frequency of that. But what if I had somebody guiding grandpa into grandma? Okay, it's gonna happen a lot more with the same amount of energy. That's how enzymes work. So you have to know in these diagrams, this lowered pathway is due to a catalyst or an enzyme. Notice something, it doesn't change the energy that you start with and what you finish. It doesn't change delta G. It just makes us occur faster. And faster or slower has nothing to do with free energy. Free energy is energy per mole, per amount of something. This makes the rate go faster. Faster rate of reaction is not more spontaneous. It just means you have a lot more working. And that's how we make these reactions work fast enough, okay, to work to support life. So this little line here would be the activation energy, EA, of a catalyst or an enzyme. It's lowered, okay? That's really important.